In this presentation, we're going to look at the neural basis of binocular rivalry, a 2006 review article by Frank Tong, Ming Meng, and Randolph Blake. In binocular rivalry, two dissimilar images are shown simultaneously to each eye, generally using a stereoscope, as pictured here. The observer, however, only perceives one of the images at a time. This is said to be the dominant image. The image that is not perceived is said to be suppressed. After a short period of time, generally a few seconds, the suppressed image becomes dominant, and the images alternate dominance. This image, taken from the paper, shows three examples of images that are used in binocular rivalry studies. So why would anybody want to study binocular rivalry anyways? First of all, this is a cool phenomenon. Both images are present in the visual field, yet only one is perceived at a time. It effectively separates the visual stimulus from conscious perception, thereby allowing us to empirically study the neural mechanisms of visual perception. In the study of the neural mechanisms underlying binocular rivalry, there have been some points of contest. First of all, there is some debate over the site of competition. Does it take place at low levels of processing, such as the lateral geniculate nucleus or monocular neurons of the primary visual cortex? Or does it take place at higher levels of processing, such as the temporal lobe? There's also debate over the type of stimulus. Finally, what types of interactions occur between neurons? Is it feedback from binocular to monocular neurons, or is it lateral feedback between monocular neurons? To address these questions, some researchers have proposed hybrid models for binocular rivalry, which combine many of these other theories. This particular model was proposed by Tong, Meng, and Blake. They proposed that in binocular rivalry, both interocular competition and pattern competition take place. Interocular competition involves inhibition between monocular neurons, while pattern competition involves inhibition between binocular pattern-selective neurons. In this image, we see pattern competition and interocular competition denoted by the blue lines. Here we see that lateral excitatory connections between neurons promotes perceptual grouping denoted by the red arrow. This grouping coordinates the activity between neurons that represent separate regions of visual space. Finally, we see that higher regions may provide excitatory or inhibitory feedback, which either contributes or detracts from rivalry. So now let's take a look at some of the studies that provided evidence for this model. An electroencephalogram, or EEG, measures electrical activity of the brain via external electrodes, as shown in the picture here. EEG studies were the first to show neural correlates of binocular rivalry. A 1967 study by Cobb, Morton, and Ettlinger found that some subjects exhibited almost complete suppression, equal to the physical alternation of the images. EEGs are limited, however, because it is difficult to identify the precise location of potentials. But because suppression appears to have occurred by the occipital lobe, it was inferred that rivalry takes place prior to the primary visual cortex. Electrophysiological studies of binocular rivalry have been performed in alert monkeys. Results from these studies were much less significant than EEG and functional imaging studies in humans. In fact, few neurons in V1, V4, and medial temporal region had strong responses. Some of the neurons even exhibited opposite responses. They responded more strongly when the corresponding image was suppressed. The inferior temporal cortex was the only region to show a strong response. Contrary to EEG studies, this points to higher level competition. To study the neural correlates of binocular rivalry in higher order areas, Tong et al. 1998 performed rivalry studies using house and face stimuli. They measured fMRI activity in the fusiform face area and parahippocampal place areas of the extrastriate cortex. These regions respond strongly to face and house stimuli, respectively. They found that house-to-face -face rivalry alternations showed increased FFA and decreased PPA activity to 91% of physical alternations. Thus, rivalry has occurred by this point. Functional imaging studies of the primary visual cortex, or V1, shown by the purple shaded area, have found that responses increase with stimulus contrast and as a function of neuron firing rate. Therefore, V1 responses reflect what is actually being perceived. Studies have shown response modulation during rivalry to be 50% of physical alternations. They can reliably predict which eye is dominant by looking at brain activity. Interocular competition, as discussed earlier, 
predicts that rivalry arises from inhibition between monocular neurons, such as those in the LGN or V1. To study this, Tong et al. 2001 utilized the blind spot, which is represented by a large monocular region in the cortex. In this region, fMRI responses during rivalry are 99% as large as physical stimulus. This implies that rivalry has been fully resolved by V1 and supports intraocular competition. The authors propose two ways that interocular competition may occur in the visual system. First, lateral inhibition may occur between monocular V1 neurons. Second, feedback may occur between monocular regions of the V1 and the LGN. In support of this, fMRI studies show strong rivalry in the LGN and V1. Figures from these studies are shown here. In the top image, we see the V1 blind spot representation. The graphs on the right display the similarity between rivalry and physical alternation responses. In the middle image, we see similar data for the LGN. Although the suppressed image is not consciously perceived, some information still reaches higher brain regions such as the amygdala, which continues to respond more strongly to fearful stimuli even during rivalry suppression. This figure shows data from studies of responses to suppressed stimuli. The graph in the top right shows that amygdala responses to suppressed fearful stimuli were stronger than to those of suppressed chair or dominant house images. The middle figure shows that the dorsal region of the interparietal celsus, which responds strongly to tools, maintains this response even when the image is suppressed. In contrast, face selective regions of the visual cortex, shown on the bottom, are highly suppressed. Psychophysical studies are an important method of examining rivalry and provide important data as well. For example, adaptation studies looking at orientation and motion after effects found that these are weakened by binocular rivalry. Therefore, rivalry weakens activity from the early cortex. However, the signal from the suppressed image is not completely destroyed. The suppressed image may contribute to characteristics of the dominant image, such as perceived motion direction, flicker rate, and orientation. Additionally, suppression may increase along the visual pathway. Perceptual grouping likely occurs via excitatory connections between neurons representing different regions of the visual field. This can have effects such as enhancing the predominance of an image. The authors speculate that grouping occurs between neurons sharing common visual features. They propose that excitatory connections may be made laterally or feedback from higher regions. Other studies indicate that local eye-specific inhibition is required for the initiation of binocular rivalry. In summary, rivalry occurs early in the primary visual. Not all is suppressed, however. Some information reaches higher levels of processing, such as the amygdala. Interocular competition, inhibitory connections between neurons, is required for the initiation of binocular rivalry. Finally, perceptual grouping, excitatory connections between neurons, may influence the duration and predominance of a stimulus.